away from Wanaki, Wisconsin to Wellington. Third old beastie's been traveling for the last five weeks by truck and boat and maybe train. I don't know. One rapid turn and one uh, stepper motor upgrade kit. Just arrived in time for Christmas. If you're like me, you like unwrapping things. Christmas presents for the engineers. Um, yeah, we're all probably hardware junkies. And so this is always a bit of a buzz. Um, so just thought I'd do a bit of a clip on unpacking it all. So we've got the motor with the poly V belt. It's um, beautifully finished. You know, the, the factory in China, I think, where these are made, um, do a really good job. Um, at least visually and superficially. I've um, got the uh, quick change motor connection kit. And um, what else? While I was at it, because I was sea freighting in um, these goods and the freight was a huge cost to bring it to New Zealand. Because it was getting on for the same price as the actual goods, um, including tax. It was uh, about $1,800 New Zealand dollars. That's about $1,500 US dollars to bring these goods in to New Zealand. Um, so I, at the same time, I got the uh, stepper motor upgrade kit. Um, with the lead shine drives and um, the new board and so on. And um, I, I must put a shout out here for Tormac. They're really decent about their upgrade kits. The pricing of them is very generous. I don't think they're making any money out of their upgrade kits. Um, there goes my phone. I better can this for a minute. Where was I? That's right, going through unpacking. Sorry about that. Um, so what else have we got? Yeah, everything is beautifully made. I mean, the, the factory is doing a great job. This, this is just the garden. It's um, really well made, welded up and filled and painted. And um, I got the uh, three-jaw chuck with the uh, C, the five C uh, collet arbor, um, and the draw tube to pull it through the headstock, and it's got a Nice little bronze bearing on the end there to take the thrust as far as I can see. I haven't looked at it closely yet. I'm always interested in chuck design and this is really interesting. Um, the scroll is quite, uh, has got quite a large ID and that means that this part here can be machined out bigger. Um, it's about 22 millimeter through hole at the moment. It could be increased a lot more than that because it's um, only providing a, an ID bearing for the scroll. It's structurally not that important because you've got a big OD ring which is much stronger and that's where it screws on to the arbor. And so you could bore most of that out uh, without losing uh, any real strength in the chuck. You probably only lose about 2% of the strength so that, that will probably be really worthwhile do, doing, boring it out quite a bit bigger to take larger diameter parts. Um, let's just race through to the other part of the workshop now. So the headstock, um, again beautifully finished. Um, one thing that concerns me is that it's, and I knew this when I bought it of course, um, that it's made of aluminium and they've got I understand the reason for doing that. Um, aluminium is, is much lighter than steel and you can hump it on and off the machine much more easily. Um, uh, the only thing that worries me is that this coefficient of linear expansion is uh, a lot more than steel. I mean it's about double that of steel. Um, and you've got a steel um, spindle and so as it heats up and there's quite a bit of preload on there now uh, which is obviously required for rigidity, but as it heats up, um, if, if it gets too, too much hotter in operation, um, the spindle won't grow as fast as the headstock, and that will put more preload on the bearings, and um, that worries me a little bit. I'm, I'm sure Tomark have thought of this, and I'm sure they've tested it, they've run it for a couple of hours, 
and have found that it doesn't heat up enough and that the preload on the bearings is not too much of a problem. Uh, let's hope so because, um, you know, I would re be really worried about that if I was developing it myself. Um, and I'd probably put some kind of a, a spring preload in behind the bearings to allow for the thermal expansion. And uh, I don't see that in their part drawing, the exploded drawing. Um, but I suppose if worse comes to the worst, a spring preload uh, could be developed that would absorb the difference in the thermal expansion, which is quite a lot. It's quite a few thou. If it raises in temperature by 20 or 30 degrees, um, you know, you're talking a really big linear difference there. Anyway, it's uh, apart from that, I'm really impressed with the quality of it. Everything is snug and fits beautifully. If you read the uh, uh, ins accuracy inspection certificate, They've got a very generous tolerances to work to in the factory. Your tool mark have been very realistic about their requirements, but the factory have achieved hugely more accurate results than is required. You know, for example, the spindle runout, um, they, they're allowed to have three hundredths of a millimeter or something spindle runout, and they've got one tenth of that. Most of the uh, allowances have been uh, are nowhere near what what they've achieved what they've achieved is about one tenth of the run out one one tenth of the error um, so they're making it to for high tolerances at least in this initial run and um, that's that's a good sign so uh, nice looking little headstock my only concern is thermal expansion